In today's episode, we're preparing for our big Easter party by cooking Easter breads from all over the world to make each of the chateau inhabitants feel at home. Join us for an epic day of baking, which doesn't always go smoothly, but ends with some pretty delicious Easter treats. Oh, it is magical. The chapel in the snow. It's just crazy. This is April. We didn't even have this lovely snow in winter. Just one day of it. Look, it's starting to settle. This makes me really, really happy. So it is such a cold, blustery day that we all thought it was the perfect day for staying in the kitchen and baking. Hello, oh, hi, Ma. See you next time. <laughs> good to meet you finally. Yeah, see you soon. No one wants you to go. This no, is horrible. I don't want to go, please. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's even snow on your car. There's snow on the car and a cat, a cat yeah, waiting to I'm go hungry. back <laughs> and be Parisian again. Bye. <laughs> okay, bye, Mom. Bye. 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 You're looking lovely and warm, yes. and this is the this is the key to like, surviving the snow wool. Yeah, All but the wool. I'm like you, really warm. You made this. Yeah. This is the one you made that we yeah. didn't see before. Yeah, exactly. This is my first ever tried a jumper, so I'm actually pretty. It's incredible. And also, shocked that it really works. Really love the fact yeah. that there's like different Yeah, here. it's like You've got those different little... things everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, it's Great. stunning. Can we have a little turn? <laughs> It's really sad that Stuart's gone and she won't be here for baking day, which is even worse. But we can't let that stop us. So back to work. I have raided the baking cupboard to see everything that we have because we have decided to make four different types of Easter bread. One for each of the nationalities currently in the chateau. So we have hot cross buns for Britain. We're going to have Pascha, which is a Ukrainian Easter bread. Rosca de Pascua, not sure I'm saying that correctly, but that's the Argentinian Easter bread. And Pastol, which is Dutch, which is basically a Stollen, but it's the Easter version of Stollen. So there is something for everyone in the house. We've printed out four recipes from the internet. And sadly, we haven't got quite all of the ingredients we need. So I'm going to have to pop to the shops, but I'm sure you've all noticed there is a glaring omission today so far, which is that there is no French Easter bread being baked today at La Lande. And that's because there actually isn't a strong tradition of a particular French bread. Some local areas do have a specialty, but it's not a huge thing in France. There tend to be more savoury specialities, and there's one called pâté de Pâques, which is basically like a long pork pie with eggs in the middle, and we will be having that at Easter. So we will be making the French speciality as well. Actually, Dan is going to make it, so that's going to be fabulous. But today we really wanted to try out the different versions of basically the same idea of a sweetened bread for Easter. And all of the nationalities represented in the chateau at the moment have their own national version of that. So I think it'll be quite interesting to see the differences and even more interesting to taste the differences. We've come to the supermarket to pick everything up. It is so chilly. I've actually brought my hot water bottle. And she's refusing to wear her scarf. <laughs> there you go. I'm going inside, Philip. We came just to get baking supplies and we seem to have got a massive bottle of martini. Hmm? You know anything about that bottle? No. How <laughs> weird. It just hmm. jumped in there by itself. I think so. Yeah. With the bunnies. <laughs> oh yeah, the bunnies. Whilst we were here, we got lots of the bunnies because they were on special offer. So Easter is starting. We're back. We've got everything we needed from the shops. I've spoken to Natty and I butchered the pronunciation of the Easter bread. Apparently it's Roca de Pacua. Pas Pacua. Pacua. Pacqua. Pasqua? Oh god. Pacqua? Roca de Pacqua. I yeah, think. Pacqua. I think it was Pacqua. We're going with Roca de Pacqua. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be making that, even though I can't pronounce it. And the Pasca bread, really similar names. Pacqua and Pasca. And Philip, you are making the pastel. Pastel. Oh, sorry. The pastel. And you're going to make hot cross buns. Yes. <sighs> this is it. Okay, there's, no, there's nothing stopping us other than possibly competence levels. <laughs> but it's going to be really fun trying. Hard times at La Land, Philip? <laughs> That's a very, very elegant wine Thank you. serving. I'm a little bit bewildered. Apparently I need to start by making a 
yeast starter, which sounds like it's going to be quite time consuming. And I've checked and indeed it says I have to put it aside for two hours. So the Argentinian bread can't even start for another two hours. So I'll be getting on with the Ukrainian bread in the meantime. Go yeast, you've got two hours to bubble up nicely, apparently. I mean, I did tell you that this was one of the... Um... What? <laughs> you just poured us wine, but you're going in straight with martini. Asked, I did ask if everyone wants No, no, I'm happy with wine, definitely. You haven't actually started on the Dutch one yet. No. It's about I pink. mean, to be fair, both of you have been like, what? Hey. 1%? Look at this, I have a yeast starter. <laughs> You've joined Team Hot Cross Bun. Yes. I thought it would be easier, but I have no idea which uh, English words correspond to which uh, things I know in Russian or Ukrainian or some other languages I know. Okay, well, luckily there's a lot of people in that room that can help you. And Oh, you've started as well. Yeah, just um, boiled up some milk and um, mixing in butter now. And then this just has to Ooh. sit until we add it to the thing, the dry ingredients that Pavlina is um, weighing together. Already this looks like the best ingredient, mixing butter mm. into milk to enrich yeah. it. This is, yeah, it's why I'm standing here just... <laughs> Philip is the only person here having to use fresh yeast, which we managed to get hold of, and I see it in Volks. I see it. Oh. It's a mix of paste of the fresh yeast and some of the milk. And I see you. So we're very clear on their instructions. <laughs> some of the milk. But at least you picked out the hedgehog. Yes. Well, you can't. You can't see, can't see it's just his little legs. I, mean, I can't. I don't think I can. <laughs> nope. That's a thick paste. But look, this is what it comes as. Yes. And now it's. Now it's that. Getting there. I hope like, that's a paste. Right? Can I just say how magnificent everyone's aprons are? <laughs> yeah, that's I think they were all pretty beautiful. They were. Yeah. Yes, including the one that I'm wearing as well. I've gone full spode today. Kitchen camera, remember? Kitchen camera. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. You're a very sensible woman not joining you <laughs> with this, Pavlina. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my goodness, yeast crisis. Okay, this is the one I'm about to use. And I think I better put the one for later in a bigger bowl. This one only needs to brew for 15 minutes. This is the one that needs to brew for two hours for the Argentinian cake. This is for the Ukrainian cake, which is already my favorite as it's easier to start. But wow, we are about to spill over. I have to start by creaming together some butter and sugar. I've just started here. I turned it off because it's making a big noise. And then add eight eggs, very rich in eggs. <laughs> Eating eight eggs together over here. How are things going with the pastel and the paste? Uh, it's going. Ooh, so what's the butter being mixed into? Uh, egg and milk. So butter, egg, milk is your start. Yes. And then you're going to add that to a lot of flour. Uh, flour, salt and sugar. So In dry here? ingredients, wet ingredients, and this is the paste. I didn't know I wasn't going to add anything else to this bowl, so I've got a massive bowl for only this bit of paste. So yeast-wise, we've got opposite problems. Yes. That's your yeast. This is my yeast. <laughs> and now I am getting on with the zest of an orange and a lemon. So we've done all of the dough for ours, um, hot cross buns, so we've now got to wait for an hour to rise, then add some fruit, which we're going to weigh out now. Uh, and then wait for another hour. So I was gonna now. Yeah, look at you, the A team <laughs> over there. The two of you. Does are so anyone smug. else need any help? <laughs> um, I mean, maybe the almond paste. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't die. Yes, yeah, please. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, you're on almond paste for the Dutch recipe. Yes. And I am still, I'm, I mean, I'm supposed to be using this any minute now. I, it's a race against time. <laughs> uh, uh, these good plates underneath, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to get a plate. <laughs> How's the almond paste going? Really, really, really good. Yes. Right. So the Thermomix is really yeah. doing its job. Nice. Please touch. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. This is incredibly good. Mm. I'm really happy. Way better than bought paste. Mm. Things are getting exciting over in the Dutch corner of the kitchen. Well, I'm wondering if I messed up because look at the amount of... No, it's good. It looks really good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I have big excitement over Do the you? Ukrainian side of the All table, right. which is I'm finally allowed to use the monster. <laughs> oh, lucky we had that plate, actually. It's about to be added to the mix. Finally. And the Argentinian yeast I've transferred to a bigger bowl and it's coming on very nicely. What is going on over here? It wasn't long enough, so we what? were doing what? this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're making almond paste and this, we need to make it into a 
like a long cylinder. Wow, I am impressed. And, yeah, this is the method. <laughs> I cannot believe you've been working on this all afternoon. Yeah. It is 20 oh to gosh. 7. It's nearly, nearly time to... Nothing's ready to go into the oven yet. Wow. I can't believe you're not with us this evening for dinner. And could you just tell everyone why that is? Mm -hmm. I love uh, this. I've been conned into going to an electro rap <laughs> concert with Dana. <laughs> Every part of that sentence fills me with joy. An electro rap concert I with Dana. I felt like I couldn't say no and I'm really regretting it. <laughs> You're going to love it. Am I? Yeah. I see you've got, you got the yeah. whole like... Ad, no, you, yeah, I was going to do the Adidas jumper because I felt like it was appropriate, but... No, seriously, take the Adidas jumper. It's absolutely freezing out there. Mm. I don't, we were all like really wholesome, baking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that side is electro rap concert. Yeah, just what I'm into. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there might be baking there too. <laughs> that is a lot of I busker. I didn't notice when I started, I just followed the recipe. And it says it's 30 servings. <laughs> There's seven of us and we're making four different breads. So I think some of this will be frozen for Easter. Oh my gosh. It smells good though because it's filled with um, lemon and orange zest and juice, so it does smell nice. I think that's pretty much needed. But so maybe we should do it with all of them. Make make a small one to taste, taste and, yeah, and free some. some. I think that's a good exactly. idea. Exactly. We're gonna have so much. Yeah, for sure. Thing. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. Now it has to rise for an hour and a half. I'll link all of the recipes that we've used today. Oh what are you working on? That looks really fun and it smells so delicious. Oh no, because I spilt the cinnamon, so I just mm, thought I'd chuck so it good. all in. Sultanas, mixed peel, apple and things which are being mixed into the hot cross bun dough, which then is going to rise for another hour. The entire surface here is now covered with proving breads, all different. Here we've got the hot cross buns, they look so good. This is the Ukrainian bread, which I have made enough of for 30 people. This is your Dutch bread. In here, we've got the Argentinian bread, and now I'm making the creme pâtissière for the Argentinian bread, which apparently needs to go on top of it. And I have to whisk it whilst it is simmering for four minutes. It's very specific, four minutes. I've made creme pâtissière for the first time in my life. I'm quite pleased, it just suddenly thickened up. Now I'm excited about this recipe. It's chaos in the kitchen, I'll be honest. We've got hundreds of proving cakes over here. Philip is doing very exciting things with Stollen in front of me. And we've decided there's just no chance that we can cook this evening for dinner. So we've ordered out for pizza instead. Here we go, Philip, with the almond paste in the kitchen. <laughs> that sounds like a cute thing. <laughs> How to kill Philip. What I find most hilarious uh, is that Philip's decided that for six of us to try this in the morning, this is big enough. There'd be like 30 of us Here's a hand Easter. for comparison. It'll rise. <laughs> we hope. Well, I mean, there were like 30 of us during Easter. I know. I just, I, I'm just, I find it hard to wait. It's impatient. I know. I think I'm it's so your impatient. problem, not mine. This is looking really good, darling. Thank you. Yay. It's, um, a work in progress. I know, everyone's amazed. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> there, you tuck that almond paste up very nicely. I want to make this again, but without almond paste. <laughs> I thought it was important to make it with yeah, because the all way. of them are quite, yeah, yeah, not just that, all of them are quite similar mm. in some ways. Yes, and this is the only one with that, you're right. Exactly. This is the Siciliana and it's absolutely delicious. And Philip, you have a pizza and a pasta. What well, pasta is supposed to be a starter? Oh, I'm sorry, you're primi. Yes, yes. <laughs> primi piatti. Yes. What do you, for you, you went for the Hawaiian? Yes. Very nice choice. And is that the Siciliana? Uh, Napolitana. Actually, that's the one I usually get. Yeah, the anchovies are really, really good. good. I mean, quite mm. frankly, it's quite good that I got this as a starter because there's not much of it. For most people, that would be a meal for them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> We've eaten the pizza. Oh, sorry. <laughs> most of us have eaten the pizza. You're I've just starting starter, on the yes. yeah, second course. And I just put my uh, thing in the oven. I know. I don't, you're on fire tonight. Thank you. And everyone's laughing at me because the recipe calls for me to do this. And everyone's saying, why don't I use the bunt pan? Well, I don't know, it asked me to do this. <laughs> Gotta stick with the traditional I mean, it's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, classic. Okay, well, this has to wait for another hour. 
I feel like this one is not rising successfully, whereas my Ukrainian one is just magnificent. Glory to Ukraine. <laughs> And made the hot cross buns look epic. I mean, they look homemade, rustic. Perfect. They look perfect. Sure. Pretty special hot cross buns. This is a huge moment. This is the first things to come up. <gasps> Emily. Wow. Emily, no one's going to be able to beat that. That's perfect. Yes. You genius. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're going to be shiny as well as beautiful. Look at those perfect crosses you did. I mean, I'm shocked they turned out this. I mean, who knows what they taste like either, but we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow brunch, what a great oh, day. This is the exciting bit. This is about to go into the oven and I have to pipe. I'm not even sure that my creme pâtissière is pipeable. It is pipeable, hurrah all the way around. Will there be enough? We just don't know. <laughs> oh, such excitement. There's such excitement in the kitchen this evening. I think it's supposed to be a little bit more malleable, my creme pâtissière, but it's very solid. It's more like a sausage filling, if I'm honest. Uh. Here we go. This is the Argentinian roca de paqua. In it goes. Oh, yours is out, Philip. Yes. I'll just taste this one. Ooh. Oh, look, I got a bit of cake with it. Mm. It's caramelised. It's oh, good. Nice. Mm. All right. Good, good. It's really good. To be fair, it's not finished like that. It's supposed to be brushed with butter and then uh, powdered sugar on top. Get I'm trying to make a twist of the bread to decorate this because there's two different ways of decorating the Ukrainian bread. One is with icing and hundreds and thousands. We will definitely do that. Hundreds and thousands, what's that? Hundreds and thousands, they're what you call sprinkles, I think. Ah. And Dutchy land. Is that a UK thing? Uh, hundreds and thousands, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yes. sure. Yeah. yeah. I grew up with hundreds and thousands yeah. rather than yeah. sprinkles. Yeah. So I'm just going to do a cross on top of this one because they would in the past have had crosses. So we need at least one that's decorated in that way. But a slightly different cross from your cross. Cross with like a little twirl at each end. Ooh. Little twisty thing there. That's the first bit of our cross. You can tell I'm not really a bread decorator, can't you? I'm really not very good at this. Nevertheless, that needs to just rest for another half an hour. I cannot believe how many hours and half an hour and two hours this has had. But then, how am I allowed to bake it? I have half an hour until my Argentinian one needs to come out of the oven and the Ukrainian one goes in. So I'm actually going to have a long, hot bath. What happened, Mrs. Claus? Um, I've had my bath and came downstairs and it's cooked, which is great. It's also not round anymore. Uh, so it decided that it wanted a bit more space. It's, I didn't have any more baking trays. It's an oval Easter <laughs> It's one. a zero. Thank you. Zero Don't for call effort. it a zero. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, now I'm putting in the next ones and we can taste them tomorrow. We've lost Emily and Pavlina. I just got hit in the head by a squirrel. We're so tired. It's the middle of the night and Philip and I are on glazing duty. So Philip is about to brush um, warm butter over yes. here. And I'm making a glaze out of sugar, water and apricot jam, mm. which I just need to bring to the boil. And after that, we just need to wait for the Ukrainian one to be ready. Oh, we can go to bed. That's looking better with a glaze. I mean, it's still a, a zero rather than <laughs> a circle. So. I give you 10 out of 10. <laughs> Note to self, have more than two baking sheets in the house. Brush on some of this. It's amazing the difference the glaze makes. Like suddenly it becomes incredibly appetizing. Well, now for the exciting bit. It feels like Christmas. I'm really surprised that the Dutch eat Stollen at Easter because for me that looks so Christmassy. But I'm happy to have an excuse to eat it at any time at all. The baby ones, the six a tiny of us. One <laughs> it's one bite for each. I was not expecting you back this evening. I thought we'd see you at like four what in the morning. Oh, We're still cooking. What? You've been to an entire French rap concert. It's like concert. 11 o'clock at night. It's really early to come back from a concert. How was it? 
So, electro, <laughs> yeah. a French electro rap. French electro rap turns out not really my sort of thing. Oh. Unfortunately. Um, the other 20 people that were in the crowd, it was their thing, I felt, but not <laughs> just not mine. <laughs> this is it. I mean, my little cross went a bit weird. Oh. <laughs> it sort of went skew whiff. It's more of a T now. <laughs> Time for tea, I think it's telling us. I thought that I could decorate this one. You can take it for Jack's birthday tomorrow. Yeah, cool. Just a little baby cake for him. Nice. As we've made so many cakes. It's day two and I've come down to the kitchen and I'm just going to lay the table, I think, with the spode tea set and get the cakes all ready and then we can sit down and taste them together. I've just made a bit of vanilla icing because there's two ways of doing the Ukrainian cakes, breads, whichever way we want to call them. One is to decorate it like this, which I did, where I failed to get a cross and got a tea instead. Um, and then there's the way that's actually used much more nowadays, which is just to put icing and hundreds and thousands. And this little cake's going for Jack's birthday today, so I think somehow he's going to be wanting hundreds and thousands. This is just vanilla paste, icing sugar, and a little bit of milk. This is going to make an awfully big mess. Should you have put a bit of bigger plate? Just... Don't be oh, silly. The first batch was a bit runny, so I've made a thicker one. And then I'm gonna add that to it as well. Need a decent base to hold the hundreds and thousands. Shall I get the sprinkles for this? <laughs> <laughs> hundreds and thousands for that. It's definitely the moment I've been waiting for. I don't know about anyone else, but hundreds and thousands time. Oh, that does look like Easter. I think this is the most Eastery looking of all of them. <laughs> I don't want to talk about um, <laughs> I can hear my mother shouting from South Africa. <laughs> Et voila! One Ukrainian Easter bread. Well, we've got some pretty proud chefs in the kitchen and one very excited taster. It's just, dangerous. It's just me. Yeah, it's just you. Brilliant. Thank you for your effort, guys. <laughs> we, we didn't want you to be hungry. <laughs> Argentinian bread, and I've added all of the little sugar sprinkles. Hot cross buns. Nice job, Emily. Ukrainian pasca, and of course, the Dutch pastel. Pastel. Good. <laughs> I keep trying. I'll I, get it one day. I am very curious to hear if it's very dry or not, because Alexa betrayed me, <laughs> and I set a timer for 40 minutes in the oven. <laughs> And after, say, 50 minutes, I was like, I'm sure it's been 40 minutes. So I asked, how much time is there left on the other time? I said, there are no timers set. <laughs> it was a very funny moment for all of us in the kitchen so sure last how night. How long it actually was in the oven? Maybe 60 minutes? I don't remember. Yeah, a long time. I think that the little one, the taste test, will probably be the most affected, but we'll give it a shot. We're still waiting for the others to come down, but we're just chatting about the history of all of these cakes because it's quite interesting, isn't it, that these countries are so far apart and yet there are so many similarities between all of the different breads. They're all enriched with fruit or butter and eggs and that's because it was the end of Lent and finally people were allowed to use all of these things in the baking. But actually, the history of all of them goes back a lot further than Christianity. For example, hot cross buns. They're an absolute symbol of Christianity. It's said that the cross represents the crucifixion, that the spices inside represent the embalming spices used in the embalming of Christ. That, that the, sounds delicious. Yeah, yeah, best not to dwell on that one. That the orange peel represents the bitterness of his time on the cross. So it's full of symbolism. But in fact, Crosses were actually baked on cakes to celebrate Eosta, and that's where we get our word Easter from. And the cross would symbolize, and that's very true of the crosses on the Ukrainian cake, the four seasons and the four directions, the points of the compass. But then as with many celebrations like Christmas, uh, it was taken over by the Christian church and is now inextricably linked in our minds to that. We'll be tasting things that go back a long way. For example, hot cross buns. Whilst buns have been made in spring for far longer, this actual recipe dates from the 1300s from Brother Thomas Rodcliffe. I'm sure you wanted to know that in particular. Wow. It. Yeah. yeah, you're just so fascinated to hear this preferring mm. hot cross bun. Yeah. And he was a monk at St. Albans. They're originally called Alban buns. 
And a lot of us know them from the nursery rhyme. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. And that was a street vendor's cry. Do you not know the nursery rhyme? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the nursery yeah, rhyme? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a street vendor's cry in the 18th century. There are real poets. That, <laughs> like that, All the street vendors had specific jingles, effectively, that they would yeah. cry out. And that was the one that was first recorded in 1767. Mm. So we, we're eating a taste of history today. Or at least we're about to. But the others aren't here. We're just looking at it. So we're just listening right. about it <laughs> intently. <yeah. laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one, the uh, Rota de Pacua, this actually comes from Spain, where it was called Mona de Pacua. The circular shape symbolizes the crown of thorns. So Sorry, this, this circular? What? Okay, <laughs> right. Get out. <laughs> and it also is supposed to symbolize eternal life. But yeah, I messed, I messed up the circle. <coughs> you must be about to carve something really big. I mean, size doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so this, well, actually that one is the Dutch bass stall. Um, however, I think I um, messed it up a little bit. because it's great. Well, so I can't have it. I've seen it on our table every mm. Easter, every Christmas, but this is what it looks like during Christmas and uh, not during Easter. Because in Easter, we uh, are supposed to roll it in almonds. Ah, oh, yes. Which I didn't do. And I added the powdered sugar in. So we have a little bit of a festive Christmassy touch here today. Exactly. So it would have looked more golden brown like the other ones. Okay, but I'll tell you what, I actually prefer this. <laughs> I prefer this to almonds, come on. But like this is very famous in the Netherlands, um, but they can't actually tell where it came from. In Dresden, in Germany, in 1438, they're already doing it. It's like the first mention of it. In Friesland, which is in the top of the Netherlands, um, they already had like Christmas breads in the same shape. So they don't know. Okay, but again, centuries old. Yes, yes. I'm loving this. World's Dude, biggest carving set. Hard. Well, you know, I talked to you about <laughs> the fact that um, Alexa. Alexa betrayed me. <laughs> so... It's like a biscuit. <laughs> oh, looks good inside though. Well. Pavlina, you're on the first piece of Ukrainian one. So that's actually the plainest of them, but you say that sometimes they do make them with raisins inside. Yes. Oh, raisins. Yeah. Does it look familiar? Or... <laughs> <laughs> that was a no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because the Ukrainian one is often served with icing and hundreds okay. and thousands, and this style isn't done with that, I put it here so everyone can just pour some over, which will help moisten it because it looks a little bit dry, my version. Mm -hmm. The taste is the same. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. The taste is Would you like some moisturizer? Yeah. 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 Philip, I don't mean to sound surprised, but yours is excellent. So good. Oh. Oh. The almond paste that you made inside. Wow. Mm. No, so, really good. what my father usually does, because you've got a little bit of almond paste when you slice it in, in the middle, mm. he usually uh, takes a knife and spreads it over the rest of the bread. Mmm. Mm. Mm. I love the taste. Nice idea. Yeah. Mm. I'm really curious to hear what Natty has to say about the Argentinian one. Well, it looks amazing. I'm scared. Before I, I went out this morning, I was like, ooh, look at this. And it looks perfect. Yeah. This was a beautiful surprise, therefore. I didn't expect. <laughs> It's a lot of bread we're eating this morning. <laughs> I think I will have it in a small piece. Are we going to go for a run? <laughs> <laughs> needed. It's needed. Look at that. It's I don't know what it's supposed thing. to look like, so I can't comment <laughs> on it. It's beautiful. People on the other side will see this. A few Argentinians followers. <laughs> okay, who wants a little piece? Thank you. You're welcome. No, that one's delicious. <laughs> Time for the hot cross bun. I left it till last, Emily, because I just yes. wanted to slather something in warm butter. <laughs> I think it's going to be my favourite. Slather. <laughs> is that your favourite word? I love it, yeah. <laughs> Which is your favourite? Of course the Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it turned out so great in like both texture and taste is the same. Oh, I'm amazed. Okay, well, I'll link to the recipe if anyone wants to try it at home. I mean, yeah, we have uh, like restaurants bake it and like... Uh, you can buy it in supermarkets and then people uh, uh, make it at home and uh, everyone has uh, slightly different recipes of course but usually like the best ones are a tasting of this lemon and uh, uh, orange zest and uh, they have this taste 
both both like milky and sweet and a little bit of like fruity uh, fresh mm, that is quite fresh and light yes and uh even the texture is uh, very 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 similar or like the same <laughs> do you have a favorite I was just, I can't decide. Um, obviously, the only one I've had before is a hot cross bun. Mm. So, Which I've always loved. I make myself, so I can't be like, they're amazing. No, they're um, not amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the other three, it was just so, I love just trying new things. And they're all, like, great in their own different ways. Like, yeah. Natty said that she preferred yours. Yes, because they're yeah. almond. Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people like that one. I actually like the Argentinian one a lot. I think that pastry cream on it, and, well, Very I'm sweet. quite greedy. It's the sugar I like. Yeah. <laughs> So I didn't try all of them, and I tried mm. little pieces. Yeah. Um, but I think my favorite was the Ukrainian one. 